Hi there! In this video, I will introduce the version control system that will be used in your senior project class. I will also describe the branching model you should follow when managing your software development during the semester and illustrate Mingle's native integration with GitHub. A version control system, also known as a revision control system, is an essential tool for distributed, collaborative software development. That is why you will be using one to manage your development tasks during your senior project class. There are many version control systems out there. Some of them follow a client-server model, others were designed with a distributed approach in mind, in which developers work individually on their local repositories, and changes are then shared between each other's repository as a separate step. In your senior project class, you will use Git, one of today's most popular distributed version control systems for software development. You will also use GitHub, a web-based Git repository hosting service. Through a web-based graphical user interface, GitHub provides all of the source code management functionality of Git, as well as additional features of its own, like graphs, for visualizing in detail the contribution of team members over the lifetime of the project. As opposed to a centralized version control system like Apache or Version, Git local working directories are full-fledged repositories, which are equipped with full version tracking capabilities and require no network access to operate. This means that the sharing of source code does not necessarily need to occur through a single central repository residing on a server. Nonetheless, it is a common scenario to see developers use a central remote repository to share their source code among one another. In the context of your senior project class, that is when GitHub comes into play. Each project will have a central repository hosted on GitHub and project members will share their work through it. Remember, there are no technical restrictions underlying this model. The GitHub hosted repository is central only because we treat it as such. Now let's get into the details of the branching model we will use in the senior project class. Branching in Git is a very cheap operation. Creating a branch amounts to creating a pointer to a specific commit in the version history. Similarly, merging two branches just creates a commit from the two parent commits, and commits are just deltas, which Git stores in a very efficient way. Given that branching and merging are lightweight operations, Git users make heavy use of them as part of their daily workflow, and you will be practicing them a lot during the course of the semester. As I mentioned before, each project will have its own central repository on GitHub, which we call the origin. This is the default alias Git uses to refer to the default remote repository. Each developer will then have his or her own local repository, initialized by cloning the remote repository. Each developer will pull the other peer's work from the remote repository and push his or her own work to the remote repository when it is ready to be shared. The project's remote repository will have two main branches that will persist throughout the life of the project. Their lifespan may even encompass multiple semesters. These branches are called master and develop. The master branch contains only production-ready final tag releases, that is, versions of the software system. At the end of the semester, the source code of head will reflect the production-ready state of the new version of the system that was developed over the semester. This will be the starting point of the next version, if there is any. From this branch, you will pull the source code for the production deployment of your software system. The develop branch will start off with the latest version of the system that is recorded in the master branch. In other words, develop is born by branching off the latest commit in the master branch. At any point in time, the source code of head reflects a state of fully done and tested tasks which are the smallest units of work in a sprint. From this branch, you will pull the source code for your development de deployments. Only when the source code is the, in this branch reaches its stable point and it is finally ready to be released as a new version of the software system, it is merged back into the master branch. You will likely reach this point by the end of the semester. In addition to the main persistent branches, you will have other branches in the remote repository. These are temporary branches that you will create to accomplish short-term goals, and you will delete them after the code makes it to a persistent branch. These supporting temporary branches include task branches. When you're ready to start implementing your development tasks, tasks that you, together with your team members, define for the user stories and defects scheduled in the current sprint, 
you will create a local branch for the task you will work on. For the sake of consistency across all of the projects, the name of the branch should start with the word task, followed by a hyphen, and then by the number mingle assigned to the task card. You are going to create this branch by branching off your local develop branch, which by the way you should update right before branching off. You should also create the associated remote branch so that you can push your work and have a backup in case you lose your local development environment. Once the task is fully done and tested, you should merge this branch back into your local develop branch, from which you will then push your work to share it with your peers. Once your work is already in the remote develop branch, you should go ahead and delete both the local task branch and extract remote branch. You should follow this procedure for every single task that you will implement in each sprint. This may seem like a lot of work, but once you get the hang of it, you will see that it sounds much more complicated than it actually is. One advantage of having short-lived task level branches instead of user story level branches is that finished functionality will be made available to the other team members earlier. Besides, they have the added benefit of helping developers focus their attention on specific coding tasks. Another type of temporary branch is the hotfix branch, which is created when a critical bug in the production version of the system needs to be fixed immediately. You may never need to create one during the semester, so I will not go into much detail about it. Hotfix branches are just regular Git branches, so the procedure I just described also applies to them. The important ideas to take away are that you could create a hotfix branch by branching off the local master branch. And once you fix the bug, you should merge it back to both the local master and the local develop branches, and then push the changes to the remote repository. Know that pushing changes to the origin master branch creates a new version of the system, which you should tag according to your software version and policy. Now that I've described in high-level terms the branching model we will follow in the senior project class, I will go ahead and illustrate a typical workflow. I will use Git, which is a command line client, but you can use any other client of your choice. Start off by cloning the project repository. This will create a copy of the repository on your personal machine. After you have done this, you may want to list all your local branches. These are the branches you should see listed, develop and master. If you look carefully, you will notice the start next to the develop branch. This means that the head, the current checked out commit, is pointing to the develop branch. Now let's assume that you will implement user story 5, which was decomposed into task A, card number 10, and task B, card number 11. Create a branch for task A from develop and switch to it to start working. As you make progress, you should record your work in your local repository. And at some point, definitely at least at the end of your working day, you should push your work. Once the task is fully done and tested, merge the task branch back into develop and update your local develop branch before pushing it. At this point, you may need to spend some time resolving conflicts. After you have published your work, go ahead and delete the task branches. At this point, you're done with task A and you can start implementing task B by repeating steps 3 through 8. By the end of the sprint, the code of all the tasks that have been implemented should be in the remote develop branch. For demoing the system to the product owner during the sprint review meeting, the team should pull the code from the origin develop branch into a dedicated development virtual machine for deployment. Keep in mind that other development deployments may also be needed during the course of the sprint. 
Now let's fast forward to the end of the semester. At this point, the remote developed branch should contain stable, production-ready version of the system that can be merged back into a remote master branch. This means that all the finalized and fully tested code from all the team members has been pushed to a remote developed branch. One of the team members should then merge the production-ready version of the system that is in origin developed back into the origin master branch and tag the release accordingly. The code from the remote master branch should then be pulled into a dedicated production virtual machine for deployment. It's precisely this deployment the one you should use to demo your system during the showcase. So far I haven't mentioned how Mingle integrates with GitHub. Well, this is how Mingle does it. It automatically turns GitHub commits into murmurs that you can see under the murmur tab. And if you mention a card number in your commit message, then Mingle also includes the murmurs in the card. The commit murmur to the Mingle project contains a link to the GitHub repository, which allows you to easily access and examine that particular snapshot directly on GitHub. In addition to this, if a tag like add someone, or add team, or add group is included in the GitHub commit message, then the corresponding members will receive an email notification. It will see on Mingle that your project has been linked with its repository on GitHub. Well, we've come to the end of this tutorial, and I really hope it helps you get started. If you're interested in learning more about Git, I invite you to visit these resources, especially the Learning Git branching demo, if you want to learn while having fun. I wish you all a very successful senior project class.